What's Gucci, everybody? You guys all look beautiful today, even though I can't see everyone. Actually, I can't see anybody. You guys and gals don't want to be sexist. The world has too much of that already. In this video, we'll be going over how to use lambdas properly and kind of a view of what I went over the last video with the difference between procs and lambdas. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a lambda function called calc and i'm going to say call it lambda then i'm going to give it the braces and we're going to do x comma y and then i'm going to do x let's do x times y so that passes in two things together and multiplies them so simply if i did puts calc dot call with two comma three what will that give me drum roll it should give me six yeah, okay, but now we're going to use this in kind of a more interesting way. So now I'm going to I'm going to kind of create an iterator here. I'm going to do 1 through 10, and I'm going to do dot inject, and I'm going to give it the calc function. And let's see if that works. It's not going to. And I get an error, and it says inject. Um, this lambda is not a symbol that is the error it is giving me so instead i need to give it an ampersand and what the ampersand is going to do is i ran it again and i got no errors but what the ampersand is going to do it's going to say okay no matter what this is i'm going to convert it to a proc and a lambda is not a proc but the ampersand tells it to convert it to a proc and if you can see here what inject inject does is it's going to take every number in x and it's going to um basically um sum up the elements how you tell it to. So I'm going to tell it to take every element, multiply it together, and save it in x as the sum, and then it's going to take that next element, multiply it by whatever the sum is, and keep on doing that throughout the whole array until it gets it. So what I'm essentially doing here is doing a factorial, ding, ding, ding. And I just want to note also the same thing is I could simply pass the symbol of multiplication, run it again, and I get the same answer, which is um that huge number, 3.26 million, I believe, that is um, in factorial. You can look it up. Factorials get pretty big pretty fast. Okay, so that is a, that's, you know, an, an easy way to think about a lambda function. Now, if I do a map here, what's this going to do? It's going to give me a wrong number of arguments exception. You guys can't see that, but it gave me a wrong no number of arguments exception. And the reason is because map only passes in one argument there. It only passes in x. And one thing I could do is I could do, it only passes in, it only does one thing, passes in one argument to the block. And so lambda errors out if it doesn't get the right number of arguments. So it only got one, but lambda is expecting two. And so if I run it with only x and x plus two, then it uh, gives me three, four, two, five. You know, it took one through 10 and added two. So instead we get three through 12 because we added two. Okay, so instead now we'll, I'm going to show you guys um, the other way to do a lambda function. Now these are exactly the same. What I'm about to show you is the sticky syntax, is the arrow syntax. And what you can do is simply um, do it this way. The arrow syntax, you can do whichever one you like, but obviously the arrow syntax has less, um, a little bit less code because you're not writing lambda. The arrow at basically stands for lambda, and you declare your parameters outside of the braces instead of with the above one, you declare it inside. And so both of these functions mean the same thing, and I can pass it into calculate right here, and I can run it, and I get the same answer. I'll make it three just to demonstrate to you guys better. And there you go, right there, like that, calculate. So you can use kind of, it's called the stabby lambda syntax, or you can use the lambda syntax, it doesn't matter, but um, they're both pretty easily readable. I like Ruby, no matter, I kind of like, you really can't go wrong with how readable anything is. So that's really nice. So now to show you guys more about procs for a second. So I do proc.new here. I'm going to do comma y, and then I'm going to run my dot map example. And remember that when I'm going to get rid of this now. That should be enough. Remember when I ran it with lambda, it gave me an error because... I need to change this back to calc. That's why I got it. It gave me an error because I was getting the wrong number of arguments. Well, proc doesn't care as much about the number of arguments. Actually, it doesn't care at all about the number of arguments. That's why I just ran my program and I got no error. So what's happening with y is y is getting filled to nil because it never got past the parameter. It's getting default to nil. And if I actually run it with using y... It will say um, in plus. It can't be coerced into a fixed num. So basically, I'm doing. I'm trying to add a number plus y, but y is always being for, forced to be nil. So I can't do that. But if I don't use y, 
it's um x isn't going to error out it's not going to the proc isn't going to error out on me so it's good to use lambda right because it tells you if you're using the right number of arguments right and you want as much error checking as possible so you can track that down find that bug and live your life happier knowing that lambdas are good so again you can call procs the same way i i went over this in another video so i can do one i can pass in i can call one and um i didn't even puts it but now there's two ones at the top i guess i'll call one 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 and then I get 111 right there. So pretty neato, pretty cool. And that's really where procs and lambdas go. You can pass them in the blocks. Um, you can pass them as functions. Just remember if you use lambdas, you've got to use the tilde. For instance, let me try. And with the procs too, I have to because the, <laughs> I, I cannot stop. I cannot assume what I'm saying here, guys. So with procs, you also need to convert it into a block because a block is different than a proc. That is kind of the interesting to think about. In the link I'll attach below, a, a block can be thought of as kind of a, um, a fledging proc. Is it's not, it doesn't have the full capabilities of a block yet. It can only get passed in at the end. It can only get passed in at the end of a statement, and a block can't be fed to a variable. For instance, I can't have do x and then um, x right here. A block can't live on its own, it needs a function. While a proc can do the same thing as a block, but it can live as a variable, it can stay there indefinitely, and blocks can only be attached to methods. For instance, if I did map do x puts x, I then get the same thing. And because I put that put right there, I got that enumerator, but now I get one through 10, so that's another important thing. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Tell me if I'm bad, if I'm good, or if I'm doing it right. See you guys later, and have the best day of your lives.